today we're going to be talking about setting up our Google account and setting up that Google account is going to be super critical in getting our Google Classroom set up. But also think of it as the key to opening up a, just a world of possibilities when it comes to connecting with our students online. So follow along and we'll have you guys set up in no time. So here we are at the web page to create your Google account and the site is accounts.google.com. Now there are other ways to get here. For example, you can just go to Google and type in create a Google account. And generally the first site that pops up is where you want to be accounts.google.com. You can also at the Google page where there's a sign in you can click sign in and this will take you to the sign in page. Now, of course, this is the first time that we're actually signing up for a Google account. So what you would do is go down to create account and that will also take you to the page that you need to be. So now that we're here, we're going to fill in all the fields that are required of us in order to create our Google account. So you type in your first name. You'll type in your last name and then it's going to ask you for a username. Um, it may go ahead and populate that username for you. That's fine. You can choose the username that you wish to use. Remember, this is the email that's going to be connected to you um, and it's going to be used as your professional email to connect with your students. So it's really important that you pay attention to your username, that it's something that's readily recognizable for you as a teacher. Um, and also that Gmail recognizes as being available because a lot of times um, what we, we may want to be our username, uh, Gmail might say that's already taken. So you'd have to try again. But just remember, this is your professional email that's going to be used to make connections with your students. So you need to pay attention to what it is that you're putting down as your username. So you can go ahead if you're happy with what Google generated for you. Um, if not, again, you can play around with it. Okay. Um, you're seeing here, use my current email address, and that's really just because I already have a Gmail, so that's okay. You're not going to actually see that in your account. It's now asking you to put in your password, and your password is need to, needs to be at least eight characters or more, and of course, you need to have a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols, so you need to pay attention to to the qualifications for or the criteria for your password. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a password. And it's going to ask me to put it in again, just to confirm that I have this, the password that I put in the first time. And now it's going to ask me to go to the next page. So I filled in all the fields that I needed to fill in and I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now here it's going to be asking you for some information to use in terms of recovery. So there may be a chance encounter where you realize you can't get into your account for some reason. Um, or for some security purpose, they may need to reach you at a different account. So they ask you for your phone number and a recovery email address. Now, both are optional. It's good to put your phone number in if you're comfortable with it, because at times they may need to send codes to you and it can come through very easily through a text message on your phone. So it is optional, but if you're comfortable, go ahead and put it in. You just need to use the drop down menu to make sure that Belize is selected as your country. And then you go ahead and type that phone number in. Now, I do suggest that if you have a secondary um, email address, that you go ahead and you put that in because, again, if they ever need to reach you, if you're locked out of your account, um, 
If you forgot your password, you're going to need this recovery email address. Now it's going to also ask you for your birthday. Please go ahead and put that in. And then it's going to ask you for your gender and you can put whichever you'd like. And then again, after you filled in all of these fields, you will move on to the next page. And your computer may prompt you to save your password. Again, if you're comfortable, you go ahead and do that. And this really is about the last page that you will meet. And it's the terms and conditions. If you scroll all the way down, you simply click I agree. And you now have your new Google account. And with this Google account, you are going to be able to access your Gmail. You're going to be able to create your Google Classroom. You're going to be able to access Google Drive and a host of other things that we're going to be talking about in our next coming sessions. So you can scroll around, play around with it, check out your personal info. Um, if you click your little waffle, as we call it, your Google Apps, You'll see all the things that you now have available to you, including your calendar, Drive, Gmail, and Google Meet. In our last video, we spoke about setting up our Google account. Now, chances are, as long as you didn't click sign out, um, the next time you try to go to the Google search engine, it will automatically have you signed in under the account that you created. Now, if it doesn't and you still see the sign in tab, that's okay. Go ahead and click sign in and it will take you to the sign in page. Go ahead and put in the sign in that you created. And then click next. And put in the password that you created. Click next. And you'll notice that the little icon now appears with your sign in. So you are now signed in with the account that we created. You'll notice the a Gmail tab and that's just for quick, easy access to your Gmail under this account. If you need to navigate to any of our other applications under Google, remember we're using what we call our little waffle here for our Google Apps. And there are all our Google, Google applications that we are now privileged to now that we have that Google account. Now these can all be dragged and dropped wherever you'd want them to be. So for example, if you'd want Gmail to be first up, you want Drive to come next, you can simply click and drag them where you'd want them to be. You'll notice that this is also where we're able to access Google Meet. So you can go ahead and click on the Meet icon and you'll be taken to the Google Meet page. Now here, you'll have several different options. So you can actually enter a code or a link. So if someone has already sent you a link, you can actually go ahead and copy that from your email onto here and you'll be able to join that meeting. But here, creating your own meetings, you'd go to new meeting and there are several different options. You can create a meeting for later and here you'd have a link that you can copy, but you'll notice it says to be sure to save it yourself so that you can also use it later. So this isn't going to always be there. It will be regenerated each time. So if this is a link you're copying that you want to start for a later time today or on a, on a specific day and you want to send these out to your students, then you'd copy it, but make sure you keep a copy of it as well. And again, when you're ready to start, you would simply paste it in and click your join button. Um, you can also start your impromptu meeting by just clicking start an instant meeting and that will take you directly to Google Meet and in a later video we're going to be talking about how we can go ahead and navigate through um, the actual meeting. 
So, so that's one way to start as well. Um, another way is actually through scheduling on the Google Calendar. And the next time we meet, I'm going to be taking you through accessing the Google Calendar through your Google Apps Waffles and setting up that meeting so that it is there for your students. They get a notification and you have it set up to get started at a certain time each day. Okay.